This meeting of Norwood City Council is hereby called to order. Please rise for the prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father, who art in heaven, is the body we congregate in these council chambers. We pray for thy divine guidance, that we may do all things well, according to thy holy will. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. I'd also like to note that the Boy Scout Troop 9 from Holy Trinity Church is here this evening or um, in the process of earning their citizenship in the community badge. So welcome, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. We appreciate that you're here. And I gave them all your names and phone numbers, so if they have any problems or questions, they can call you. So. Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden. Here. Mr. Clark. Here. Mr. Whittington. Here. Ms. Allen. Here. Mr. Thornbury. Here. Mr. Sanker. Here. Mr. Mumper. Here. All members are present. We have several amendments to the agenda. First in Section J, um, introductory readings of ordinances, we'd like to add an ordinance amending Section 3 of Ordinance Number 33, 2014 to establish stormwater assessments. Um, the second one is an ordinance amending Section 14 of Ordinance 18, 2009 to extend the Community Reinvestment Area Program. Number three is an ordinance authorizing the Safety Service Director to apply for grant funding through the Ohio Department of Transportation for Safe Routes to School. The fourth is an ordinance creating and establishing the Stormwater Management Fund. And the fifth, um, an ordinance providing for the issuance of and sale of not to exceed $1.2 million in notes. Under J1, um, introductory readings of ordinances, a resolution urging the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Regional Council of Governments to fund a feasibility study and corridor analysis of higher speed rail service between Cincinnati and Chicago, um, and so on. Um, number two, a resolution supporting the Wasson Way bicycle path. Um, Resolution three that is on your agenda, I'd like to move, um, there is a, I would like to have a Dawn Gardner, who is from Cincinnati Children's Hospital, to um, do a brief presentation, and then there is a resolution number three that follows that. Under section O, we would add letters two, three, and four on your um, a, amended agenda is a letter from the mayor regarding mayor's court fines for February 2015. Um, no, I'm sorry, January 2015. Um, a letter from Mark <coughs> Guttentag regarding a carryout liquor permit TREX transfer, and then a letter from the Economic Development TREX transfer form. <laughs> Mr. Clark. <laughs> I move to amend um, the agenda as you stated. Seconded by Mr. Thornberry. Is there any discussion? I'm sorry, and we're going to add an administrative report as well. We made up to Please. Can we do we say January twice or one for February March? Um, there are that? two. One is an amended. The one we got in our packet, um, our, our um, the amended report. Okay. The amended report for January 2015, and then the second is for February 2015. I apologize. Okay. So we, I was correct the first time. So Sorry, the first one, the letter from the mayor, is one that we got in our PDF packet that was emailed to us. That was an amended January report. And then letter two um, is the mayor's court fines for February 2015. Mr. Clark, that's okay. Meet your approval? Yep. Mr. Thornberry? All right. Any other discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. We'll move on to minutes of the February 10th, 2015 meeting. Um, just make a note that on page two, under K1, the introductory reading of ordinances, Mr. Mumper, sec Mr. Mumper made the motion and he seconded it according to these rules, but I, much as we like that he moves the meeting along, <laughs> um, we checked Thornberry. and Mr. Mumper made the motion and it was seconded by Mr. Thornberry. So if you'll make those um, changes, we'll move on to consideration. Mr. Thornberry. Yes, Madam President, I move that we <coughs> accept the minutes as if read. Seconded by Mr. Mumper. Any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. 
Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Um, we'll move on to um, request to address council and we're going to ask Don Gardner from Simtai Children's to come forward, please. Who has a broken foot, by the way? <laughs> we appreciate that you uh, still came. <laughs> if you'll just give us your name and say that you work at Sensei Children's, that's all we need. Um, uh, I'm passing around now, they're passing around now copies of the um, presentation that I'm going to um, run through really quick. Um, my name is Donna Gardner. I'm an injury prevention coordinator at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. And um, I am also a proud member of Preventing Injuries in Norwood, or PEN, um, which is what we're going to talk about today. Um, so I'm to make sure everybody can follow along. Okay, so I promise to be brief but informative. <laughs> um, so, uh, Preventing Injuries in Norwood is a hospital community partnership that I am very proud to say is working. Um, we have been um, um, working to put this partnership together since 2011, um, and we've seen great, great, great um, results um, now coming into 2015. But before I really go into those, I just want to, if you want to turn to page two, I just want to kind of um, get us all on the same page of why injury prevention is even important. Um, so to start off, when you look at some of the nursery rhymes that we've been singing generation after generation after generation, um, not so much about injury prevention. Um, as this child is saying, um, stop singing rock a baby to put me to sleep. I mean, a song about putting a baby in a cradle, in a tree, then have it come crashing down doesn't exactly make me want to close my eyes. <laughs> but this is what we've been singing to our, or singing to our kids generation after generation after generation. So just mm -hmm. something that's really funny that um, is definitely not about injury prevention. <laughs> um, so a little more into the uh, background of why we would even, um, why <coughs> injury prevention is important. Unintentional injuries, or sometimes you hear them called, called accidents, are the number one killer to kids under the age of, eight, of 19. If you combine all diseases together, um, unintentional injuries are, is still the number one killer. So um, it's very important, but a lot of times parents don't see that. They just see it as their child has had an accident. And so um, these, these injuries, these um, uh, unintentional injuries are preventable. Whether it's the right education or the right equipment, um, we can stop these kids from getting injured and killed. Um, so if you look, it, there has been reductions over the decades, um, but um, unintentional injury is still the leading cause of death and disability. About 42% of pediatric deaths are due to un unintentional injury. More than 1 in 10 children are seen in the emergency rooms for an injury, and over $24 million is spent on care of injured kids in, in Hamilton County alone. So it's huge. Um, and then when you look at it even, even more, um, we focus on the kids under five. And those kids are injured in the home most of the time. And when you think about it, they're really not in school, so they're either at home with mom or maybe at a home daycare or grandma's house or aunt's house, but those kids are mostly injured in the home. And so um, we, at, when we came to meet Penn, or we came to um, Norwood in um, order to try to address some of the unintentional injuries, um, we looked at our data in the emergency room and we, we saw as it is nationally that kids under five are what we're seeing coming into our emergency room and those kids are being injured in the home. So that we wanted to stop that. We knew that we could stop those injuries um, with, with getting out the right education and with the right partnerships. So that's how Penn came about. So why did we choose Norwood? Um, Norwood had the families. 832 homes with um, 1,150 kids that were in our age range. 92% um, of the injured children seeking emergency care um, going into Cincinnati Children's were from Norwood. And that's a really, really high rate. So we, we um, hit, it hit on our radar and we knew that this is where we needed to be. Um, in addition to that, Norwood has outstanding organiz organizational leadership. I mean, it's, it's a very organized community. It's a very open community. It's a very easy community to work with. It was a perfect fit for us. And um, we were accepted with open arms. So I um, want to thank everybody who started, uh, started out with us. There's a few pen mem uh, members in, in here now. So And then, um, it, like I said, it was just a great potential for us to partner. So um, we knew Norwood was the place that we wanted to be. So 
once we got the partnerships and, and um, got everybody around the table, um, how do we decide that we were going to get to these uh, kids? How are we going to engage them? And what we decided was to do what's called a safety day. And what we do for safety day is we schedule them maybe about two times a year, normally in May and in October. Um, we recruit volunteers um, from the community, from the hospital, um, from some of our sponsoring um, um, uh, partnerships, which I'll, I'll talk about briefly. Um, we recruit volunteers. And, all, and then while we're recruiting volunteers, we also recruit Norwood families. So we are, spend a lot of time at Kroger's, kind of face to face. Um, do you have a kid under five? Do you live in Norwood? Oh, we have, we need you. You know, do you want to partner with us? And so um, this is kind of what makes up our safety day. Recruited volunteers, recruited families. And um, once again, all organized by this pen. This is not a Cisnai Children's Hospital um, um, initiative. This is a partnership with Norwood. And uh, we're, we are very proud to say that because sometimes we, we can come in and just kind of take over and then it's just Cisnai Children's. This is very much pen, and we're very proud of that. Um, so we get the families, we get the volunteers, um, we set up a day. Um, our first day was uh, Saturday, May the 12th, that we decided to do the safety day. Um, so what we did was we found a place um, here in Norwood and we <coughs> brought our volunteers in. We trained them that morning on how to install um, basic home safety equipment, which I'll, I'll talk about here in a second, but basic home safety equipment and um, to provide basic home safety education. We give them a script. We have cabinets with drills and they are hands-on training. Um, after they're trained, we partner them up, one installer, one educator. We send them out into the pre-registered homes, normally two to three. Um, they do a, the education while one's educating, the other's installing. It takes about 45 minutes. Um, the equipment that we provide is about $100. It's free of charge to the families. We will not come back and, and ask them for it. We won't bill them for it. We won't come back and say, oh, we're going to take this out. It's free of charge thanks to grants. So go in, um, install the equipment, do the education. We know that that home is, is safer than when we came. Um, we have um, we do it all in one day, a couple hours. We give them breakfast to get them to come. We give them a good lunch to get them to stay. Um, and um, you know, it's it's an in and out thing. We are able to get maybe 30 or 40 homes in one day, which is humongous. Um, so when we started in May, we were just doing the safety days. Um, and between then, we we've, we've got some other um, partnerships. And like I said, I'm gonna touch base on that. So just part of the fun for safety day. Um, so this is the equipment that we have that we offer. Like I said, it's about hundred dollars worth of free equipment. Free it, give it to the families. If it's something that they can't use or something that they already have, we encourage them to give it to a neighbor, give it to the give it to grandma, give it to a um, babysitter. We just want to spread the message of safety. Um, and we we so we give them the equipment. Like I said, we are able to install it. We also give them a safety guide that um, internally um, at the at the hospital we put together for kids under five. We want to keep them out of our emergency rooms. That's our that's our that's our job. So um, we try to provide the families with all the resources that we can to do that. So now we've put the safety day together. We have got our families. We've got our volunteers. This, the, 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 they're out and they're they're doing homes. Um, and our results are showing that the bundles are working. Um, we had six safety days um, starting May the, uh, 2012 to October 2014. 235 homes received the, our, our um, $100 home safety bundle, once again free of charge. We have seen a 59% reduction in injuries in those homes that we have been in. That is huge. We know our bundle is working. Um, and then the homes that we haven't been in, where we've just provided a little education to the um, community, we've seen a 6% increase. We need to get into homes. We need to get into all the homes. Because um, right now we're, we're only at 235, and like I said in the beginning, we know that there are about 840. So um, just before I even move on, I'm putting a call out to everyone who knows, has a, knows a family with kids under five, we need them. <laughs> you don't even have to live in the home. Right, oh yeah, and this is not, um, this is not about, uh, this is, aunts, uncles, the, the child doesn't even have to live in that home, but if they babysit, if they interact at all with this child, we want to protect them because it only takes a second and they could just be visiting and be injured. So any home that touches a child under five that lives in Norwood, we, we would like to see them. We would like them to, to uh, we'd like to engage them and get into their homes. Um, one of the um, 
Big results of this is that we know long, we have um, resources outside of the safety day. We have an outstanding partnership with the Norwood Fire Department. So we're before um, we can only reach them on a safety day, and if we got homes in between, we're kind of oh, it may be a couple weeks, it may be a month before we could get to you because we're not having another safety day. We have created this partnership where if we do a safety day on you know May the twelfth and then May the 14th we get a family, we can call the fire department and they can go in instead of them waiting until our October um, safety day. So they have now started to really do it year round for us and it is working, it is a model um, and, and we just couldn't do it without, without them. So very proud of that partnership. Another result of um, our safety day and our pin outreach um, is the publication and I put the actual link um, on here, but we were um, in uh, November 26, 2013, um, Norwood was uh, in Forbes um, just because of the outstanding work and the outstanding partnership. Like I said, this has really become a model and, um, and people are noticing and people want to do what we do. So um, should be very, very proud. So lastly, I just want to say thank you. We could not do it alone. Like I said, we do not want this to be a children's hospital initiative, but a partnership, and that's what it's become. Um, so we just thank you for um, allowing us to come in. Thank you with open arms. And, um, and like I said, if you have any families under five, we would love to, love to engage them. So thank you. Questions? Mr. Clark. Um, is there any other stipulations besides just having a child? Like, is there an income restriction? So, injury has no socioeconomic income. You Good could answer. Put, you could put two thousand dollars worth of home safety equipment in your home. Your child could still get injured. So there is no, there are no socio socioeconomic boundaries. You have a child under five that touches your home, and you live in Norwood, you qualify. Okay. Mr. Thornberg. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Uh, you may have said it, but if someone is listening right now. Who do they call? Who do they contact? My information is on the um, front of the PowerPoint. So they call this phone they number. Call, they can call me. They call you directly. They call me directly. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I and, my contact and, information on it. <laughs> and just and just so for those out there, the number is area code five one three six three six three one five three, and the uh, uh, email is dawn. That's d a w n e uh, dot gardner at c c h m c dot org. But uh, uh, what's the quickest way? I mean, if you're you're listening to this and you just want to go, you, f you forget all these numbers and everything. Is there, the is there some place on the, the health department? Yeah, we have a partnership with the health department. So, so, so people should that. call would call the health department. And they can stop by the health department. Yep. Okay. And they, I mean, we don't encourage the fire department's uh, <laughs> phone to ring off. For her oh yeah, 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 yeah. But um, <coughs> they, I mean, they definitely have a direct line to us. But okay. the health department also. We have, I mean. A, a, we work with the schools, we're working with the health department, we're, we're working with um, some of the early childhood, so um, there's a lot of people who can get in touch with us, but the health department will probably be their first stop. Thank you. Mr. Clark, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, was, Mr. Mumper? Yeah, one question. question. Since you're limping and Andrew Clark's <laughs> limping, could, could they visit your homes? <laughs> um, and actually, I did have a fall down the stairs. <laughs> Mine was because of ice. So. <laughs> as of um, last month, I was over the age of five. <laughs> so each time we see the Norwood, Fire, the Norwood Life Squad going up Burnett Avenue, we all go, no, yes. no, yes. no, don't turn into children's. No, no. Yes, we do, and it's really sad that we don't. Mr. Mayor, did you have a question? What, do you list the type of accidents or injuries, or whether it be getting into cleaning or slides, or do you, do you have like a list of what, what the causes are and what the percentages yeah. so, are? So that the number one injury that we see are falls. That's off of wind. That's out of windows. That's in the bathtub. That's down the stairs. Those falls now include furniture falls, so either jumping off a child jumping off of furniture or furniture falling on them. That really has increased. So TVs falling on kids, dress kids climbing on dressers, bookshelves, and those falling over. So that's the number one injury. Um, the equipment that we provide is proven equipment, and it reaches some of the, the top areas. So uh, that would be poisonings. Um, so we provide the lock, so you can lock the uh, lock the poisonings up, and carbon monoxide detector, which is a poison. So we do poisonings. We do burns. Um, so smoke detectors, we do bathtub thermometers so there's not scald burns um, from a child, you know, being water that's too hot. Um, poisoning falls and um, burns are the top three injuries that we see, with falls being the number one. 
Can you speak to the fire that happened after? So we did um, have a safety day, and we sent some volunteers into a home that was a daycare. Once again, if they touch a child under five, we would like to see them. Um, it was a daycare. Um, it is our practice, just because smoke, de smoke detectors um, expire, and um, a lot of times we go into homes and they don't just don't have a battery in it or the battery's beeping and they have totally ignored it so we walk in and it's the first thing we hear your smoke detector's beeping and they have gotten so used to it that they ignore it um, so we have decided we decided that we provide um, smoke detectors that have a 10-year battery so they don't have to worry about changing it we do ask them to check it but they don't have to worry about changing the battery for 10 years and we as as protocol we install that smoke detector we find a place to install it which is what we did in this daycare. She had working smoke detectors, they were everywhere, but still we had told our volunteers, you are to find a place to install it. So upstairs they installed our smoke detector. About two weeks later we got a call. She said that after we left, her smoke detectors, her smoke detectors that she had in the home started beeping. We had checked them and they were fine, but I mean, they could go bad in any day. Um, she did not change the battery. Someone was upstairs smoking outside on her up, up, uh, upstairs deck, flipped the um, cigarette up into the gutter where the leaves were, caught the whole top floor of the house on fire with daycare kids downstairs, and our smoke detector was the only one that went off. So those little stories like that, um, it, that's exactly why we do it. Exactly why we do it. It's just something that quick. Thank you for doing it. <laughs> well, thank you for having us. <laughs> we couldn't do it without you, so thank you for having us. Thank you. So stay here. <clears throat> okay. We got you here under a false pretense. What? So we'll move on to um, consideration of resolution um, honoring Dawn Gardner for her commitment to keep, being, to keep Norwich children safe. Much pleasure. Mr. Mumper. I'd like to suspend the rules and have all three readings. Yeah, first in, first its, in entirety. its entirety. Yes. Second by Mr. Clark. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Please have all three readings. Resolution honoring Dawn Gardner for her commitment to keep Norwood's children safe. Whereas Dawn Gardner began working at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, Medical Center in 2008 as an injury prevention coordinator in emergency medicine and whereas Ms. Gardner joined the Comprehensive Children's Injury Center in 2011 and, be and began meeting with various Norwood leaders to discuss rate of injury to Norwood's children and develop a plan to address child safety, especially in the home, and whereas Ms. Gardner became an integral part of developing the concept of preventing injuries in Norwood, PIN, as a way to organize volunteers to install safety equipment in homes and educate caregivers about keeping children safe and Whereas, on May 12, 2012, Ms. Gardner organized the first Norwood Safety Day where volunteers installed safety equipment and educated caregivers about child safety in various homes throughout Norwood and, whereas, the success of the first Norwood Safety Day led Ms. Gardner to organize such events twice annually since 2012 with over 200 volunteers taking part since the first Safety Day and, whereas, Ms. Gardner met with trained and provided safety bundles to the Norwood Fire Department so that safety installations and education can take place throughout the year, thus embedding the program in the community and, whereas through her leadership, Penn has installed safety equipment affecting 324 children in 235 homes with children under the age of five, whereas such safety equipment and education has resulted in 65 fewer Norwood children injured at home in a steady decline in the number of Norwood children seen in the emergency department, and whereas the statistical success of Norwood Safety Day and PIN were presented to over 200 physicians, providers, and other hospital staff at Cincinnati Children's Grand Rounds on February 24, 2015, and whereas Ms. Gardner has also found for the benefit of Norwood children funding for playground equipment, mulching, and other improvements to Norwood parks, and Whereas, Council, the Administration, and all residents of the City of Norwood wish to honor and thank Dawn Gardner for her dedication to the community and commitment to keeping Norwood's children safe. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the City of Norwood, State of Ohio, that 
This resolution recognize, recognizes the efforts of Dawn Gardner in founding Norwood Safety Day and implementing the PIN program, her dedication to the community, and her commitment to keeping Norwood's children safe. Resolution honoring Dawn Gardner for her commitment to keep Norwood's children safe. Resolution honoring Dawn Gardner for her commitment to <laughs> commitment to keep Norwood's children safe. Mr. Mumford. I move the resolution be passed. Seconded by Mr. Clark. Is there any discussion? Mr. Sanker. Uh, yes, Madam President, I would just like to, this resolution is just a small way of saying thank you. I mean, it, I, but it, it is an important thank you because the amount of time that you spent on this program actually has proven to show true results and uh, you know we're never going to be able to solve every safety issue in every home but at least this is a start and it's it's an awareness thing that as the word gets out you know we can you know keep building on that program so we'd like to say thank you and I'll, at least on my behalf and that's from the new grandpa <laughs> and you should visit his house too. <laughs> is there any other discussion call the roll please mr braden yes mr clark yes mr whittington yes ms allen yes mr thornbury yes mr sanker yes sir mr mumper yes all members present voting aye the motion carries we have a copy of the resolution for you Can you help her out? <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not enough damage. I have the distinct privilege of working side by side with Donna. Um, she's uh, right across the, the little alley or little way. We're in cubes and uh, we speak to each other all the time. Well, they rarely let us out together because we tend to get into trouble when we're out together. But she does fabulous work and I thank you again for everything that you do. I'm sorry to lie about it too. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, no reports of standing committees of council. We move on to second readings of ordinances. It's an ordinance promoting the citywide street sale and abatement of all permit fees associated with the sale. Much pleasure, Mr. Sanker. Uh, yes, Madam President, I'd recommend we could have the second and third reading, but also at the end of it, if you could just at least state the dates, that it's not in, read it in its entirety. Seconded by Mr. Mumper. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Please have the second and third readings. Ordinance promoting the citywide street <laughs> sale and abatement of all <coughs> permit fees associated with the sale. Ordinance promoting the citywide street sale an abatement of all permit fees associated with the sale. The citywide street sale will be held during the, uh, on May 1st between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. and May 2nd between the hours of 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. So Don, make note, we cannot have a safety day on that day. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mumper. I move your ordinance be passed. Seconded by Mr. Clark. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Whittington. Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. We'll move on to introductory reading of ordinances. And the first is an ordinance amending section 3 of ordinance number 33-2014 <coughs> to establish stormwater assessments under the Ohio EPA NPDES general permit and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mumper. I move we suspend the rules have all three readings. Second by Mr. Thornberry. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornberry? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Please have all three readings. Ordinance amending section three of ordinance number 33 2014 
to establish stormwater assessments under the Ohio EPA NPDES general permit and declaring an emergency. Ordinance amending section three of ordinance number 33-2014 to establish stormwater assessments under the Ohio EPA NPDES general permit and declaring an emergency. Ordinance amending section three of ordinance number 33-2014 to establish stormwater assessments under the Ohio EPA NPDES general permit and declaring an emergency. Mr. Sanker. I recommend that the ordinance be passed. Seconded by Mr. Clark. Is there any discussion? Mr. Sanker. Yes, Madam President, just as a, a note of explanation, uh, when we passed the original ordinance um, a while back uh, for the stormwater uh, fees that would be coming in, in that particular ordinance, it actually stated that those funds were going to be deposited in, I believe, into Fund 55. And um, when we were looking at that, um, that would or <coughs> would have gone into the water fund, I believe, is where it was going to go into. However, that um, that was a miscommunication. It, it really um, these funds are not to go into the water fund. They're supposed to go into a, the, a separate stormwater uh, fund, which then will take care of the fees and any um, some of the repairs that would be done to different uh, uh, stormwater collection basins and things of that nature. You'll find later on on the agenda, there's also an ordinance establishing that fund, which will then allow that fund to be used specifically for um, stormwater related issues. So it was just that the original ordinance, we had the wrong um, uh, fund listed in there. And that's why this is in to be changed and the new ordinance coming up later to establish the parameters for that fund. Thank you. Is there any other discussion? <coughs> Motion on the floor is to pass the ordinance. Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. We'll move on to Ordinance 2, an ordinance amending Section 14 of <coughs> Ordinance 18-2009 to extend the duration of the Community Reinvestment Area Program under Ohio Revised Code Section 3735.65 through 3735.70 and declaring an emergency. Mr. Thornberry. Yes, Madam President, I move that we suspend the rules and have all three readings of the ordinance. Seconded by Mr. Braden. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornberry? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Please have all three readings. Ordinance amending Section 14 of Ordinance 18-2009 to extend the duration of the Community Reinvestment Area Program under Ohio Revised Code Sections 3735.65 through 3735.70 and declaring an emergency. Ordinance amending Section 14 of Ordinance 18-2009 to extend the duration of the Community Reinvestment Area Program under Ohio Revised Code Sections 3735.65 through 3735.70 and declaring an emergency. Ordinance amending section 14 of ordinance 18-2009 to extend the duration of the community reinvestment area program under Ohio revised code sections 3735.65 through 3735.70 and declaring an emergency. Mr. Clark. I move that the ordinance be passed. Seconded by Mr. Mumper. Is there any discussion? Mr. Sanker. Madam President, yes. A while back, back in 2009, uh, we did establish a, the, the, well, the CRA, which is the Community Reinvestment Area um, Program, which allows for some, um, I guess, tax deferral, tax abatement type things for certain uh, redevelopment uh, within the city. Um, this not only pertains to businesses, but also pertains to residential folks as well. And um, back in 2009, you see how the program works. So we, we actually got to a point where um, we set a date, uh, an expiration date on it, which uh, it seems to be a program that has some interest and actually uh, affords businesses and residents 
an opportunity to take advantage of, of uh, some abatements and or rebates. Um, so therefore, in the ordinance as it states, it will be uh, in, in existence now until uh, council deems necessary to repeal the ordinance. So there's not a specific ending date you know, on this particular program. So far, it's been uh, a program that's worked pretty well. I don't know if the mayor had any comment on the CRA program Mr. as mayor? well. Or? Thank you, Mr. Sanger. You, you hit it exactly. I think, too, one of the things we've got to remember is this, this has paid dividends already. And in the past, as Mr. Sanker correctly alluded to, as we kept hearing, well, you're doing stuff for developers and construction and businesses. This is an incentive for property owners to invest into their property and, and receive the same benefit. The other thing about this is uh, we'll say somebody buys a home and we'll say they pay 50000 and they put a hundred, a developer buys it and puts 100000 in it and gets the CRA. That CRA is transferable, and it's an incentive for people to not only invest in their homes, but in businesses. So it's, it's paid dividends already, and we've gotten the word out pretty well. We've talked to realtors and a few other things. So as Mr. Sanker alluded to, this is, this is, uh, this is paid off already and, and desire to keep on with it until council in its wisdom decides to repeal it, I think is the correct way to go. Is there any other discussion? <coughs> Motion on the floor is to pass the ordinance. Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Next is an ordinance authorizing the Safety Service Director to apply for grant funding through the Ohio Department of Transportation for the Safe Routes to School Program to enter into a contract with the Director of the <coughs> Ohio Department of Transportation necessary to complete the Safe Route to School Infrastructure Improvement Program in declaring an emergency. And I'll note that Deb Robison is here if you have any questions of her. And I think we, um, Ms. Thornberry emailed out to you the projects. Um, yes, Mr. Sanker has that packet. Mr. Sanker. Madam President, um, Deb's here. I didn't know if she would like to just give us a brief summary or overview, just update. Ms. Robinson, can you come up? And is there a deadline for this to be to the state, I guess, is another question. Always, <laughs> always a deadline. We've submitted the application. This is the final piece of that. Okay. So, so just an overview. Um, when our engineer was here last, he gave you kind of this really big, almost $2 million worth of improvements that could happen. And um, we can only apply for 400000 So based on feedback that we got here and feedback that we've gotten from other places, principals, schools, um, we kind of narrowed that down to some projects that were really um, the most pressing to kind of to get things rolling, things that um, could be quickly done, easily done, and get us on the right track. So a lot of those have to do with signage and the, the flashing lights and, and appropriate flashing lights, um, some speed humps over by Williams, um, and s just some corrective kinds of things uh, that are really close to, to each of the schools. Like I said, we could only apply for $400,000 this round, so it's about $100,000 per, um, per school is what we kind of decided on. So. And could you speak, um, I had someone question about Section 2 about that. Um, the City of Norwood, if awarded the funds, further agrees to pay 100% of the construction cost over the maximum amount provided by the State of Ohio. And talk sure. about the contingencies okay. that are built in. So Thank when you. our our, um, our engineer provided certified estimates for this, as part of that, he put in a 20% contingency and also built in the, the standard rate of inflation for these kind of projects. So all of that was kind of put in place. So as these, you know, if we're funded, that um, for three years, that, that should be enough for whatever, whichever project is, is in your list. Um, there's enough contingency money and enough um, inflationary money to cover those costs. Um, I think that that is in there so that we don't say, oh, let's just, you know, hold off on that and let it run up or 
um, do something a little bit different at that point then that would be our cost to our city's cost to pick up um, but if we stick to the plan we should be fine mr. Sanker yeah uh, Deb, just a quick update we say this funding is, is is awarded to us what time frame are we under to make this this project happen or <coughs> part of the projects or all of it or is there a deadline we have to have it done by 2017 in July or something of that um, nature? my understanding is that it would um, this is, when I asked the engineer about that he said that um, you know these projects don't happen kind of overnight so that we could um, reasonably expect that it would take until 2018 for these projects to be completed um, so so my understanding is that 2018 would be the the time frame between the time it's awarded which is sometime this summer and then 2018 okay that was going to be a follow-up but if it just so the awards will be made public by sometime in july i think so yeah okay. because that's the okay. fiscal year of the funding cycle mm -hmm. i'm hoping sooner but that's mm -hmm. what i suspect will happen any other questions of Ms. Robinson? This is a really nice start for us, and the thing is, is we can apply year after year for this money. And so, while the the big plan we can't accomplish everything at once, we can apply again for another amount of money, and again for another amount, and again until we kind of um, hit all of those areas and and really do some good work. Mr. Sanker, hey, just real quick, you just kind of hit a hot, another hot button on so. This is our wish list on this particular program, if I remember right. And then, say they award us 150,000 to get started on signage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then next year we go back and say, hey, we did a great job on the signage. Right. Now mm -hmm. we need this to put in right. curb cuts mm -hmm. or handicap accessible, this and that. Right. So we need this because look how well we did on this particular right. part of it. Okay. Yeah. Now yeah. the the travel plan, which is the the plan that Mark presented to you all, which was many many pages. That's the plan that the state has approved. So um, we we can't go back without some significant redo and say, oh yeah, now we want to do this thing over here. But anything that's in our approved travel plan, we can go back to it in our next round and say, okay, now we want to do this piece, this piece, this piece. All right. Just follow up. Just because I would just, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead, Mr. Sanger. Uh, just so that we may not get all this in one year, but we will <coughs> go back and reapply potentially for, for some My hope is that we get the 400000 this year. But if not, it would be something that we would go back and reapply. We would apply next year and next year and next year. Mm -hmm. So the meeting today in the city of Woodlawn is going through the same process and just submitted theirs, and so they're hoping to get... It's a, it's a big process. Deb, <laughs> Deb has worked on it very long. She... Mm -hmm doesn't take a lot of self-credit but she has done a, the lion's share of the work on this but it's project. a good it's a really good thing it's a really good thing for our city it's a really good thing for our kids who are our youngest residents and I think um, it can really it, it will help our city it will help our kids all it's all good any other questions thank you Ms. Robinson thanks we can move to can Ordinance is up for discussion. What's your pleasure, Mr. Clark? I move that we suspend the rules and have all three readings of the ordinance. Seconded by Mr. Thornberry. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornberry? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Uh, yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Ordinance authorizing the Safety Service Director to apply for grant funding through the Ohio Department of Transportation for the Safe Routes to School program to enter into a contract with the Director of the Ohio Department of Transportation necessary to complete the Safe Route to School Infrastructure Improvement Program and declaring an emergency. Ordinance authorizing the Safety Service Director to apply for grant funding through the Ohio Department of Transportation for the Safe Routes to School program to enter into a contract with the Director of the Ohio Department of Transportation necessary to complete the Safe Route to School Infrastructure Improvement Program and declaring an emergency. Ordinance authorizing the Safety Service Director to apply for grant funding through the Ohio Department of Transportation 
for the Safe Routes to School program to enter into a contract with the director of the Ohio Department of Transportation necessary to complete the Safe Route to School infrastructure improvement program and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mumper. Move the ordinance be passed. Seconded by Mr. Braden. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. <coughs> Next is an ordinance creating and establishing the Stormwater Management Fund and declaring an emergency. Mr. Sanker? Madam President, I would recommend we have all uh, three readings by caption only. Seconded by Mr. Mumper. Is there any discussion? Mr. Sanker. Just to follow on Madam President, as I mentioned before, this actually will establish the parameters for the money to be dispersed for that is collected in the storm water fund. Motion on the floor is to suspend the rules. Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Ordinance creating and establishing the Stormwater Management Fund and declaring an emergency. Ordinance creating and establishing the Stormwater Management Fund and declaring an emergency. Ordinance creating and establishing the Stormwater Management Fund and declaring an emergency. Mr. Mumper. I move the ordinance be passed. Seconded by Mr. Clark. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. The last ordinance is an ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of not to exceed $1,200,000 notes in anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of refunding outstanding bond anticipation notes and declaring an emergency. Mr. Sanker. Uh, yes, Madam President, I'd recommend we have all three readings of this ordinance by caption only. Um, as we've discussed in finance uh, since actually last year. We have year. a second and then we'll do oh, discussion. I'm sorry, Madam President. Mr. Mumper, you want a second? Yes. <coughs> Thank you. Now, Mr. Sanker. <laughs> sorry. That's all right. Go ahead. Uh, as we've discussed in finance over the last couple of years, um, this is a, uh, a direct result of, of the work that Mr. Stitt has put forth um, searching to find someone to, to uh, take over some of our um, refinancing some of our bonds. Um, so I would like to actually ask Mr. Stitt to be one to give a, a little more of a detailed explanation. I know our broker is here as well. If, uh, if we deem fit for him to answer any questions as well. So, Mr. Mr. Stitt. Yes, Madam President, as uh, Mr. Sanker has stated, we've been discussing the refinancing of these bonds actually for about the past two years since we had to make the emergency um, sale of bonds to private investors at a significant interest rate. Uh, we've decided to go with a one-year note. Uh, we have $1,770,000 due on March 27th to the private <coughs> investors. We are going to borrow $1.2 million and pay off an additional $570,000 out of our property tax uh, collections that we'll be getting, thereby decreasing the amount of the city's debt by roughly a third, <coughs> a little less. Uh, our intention is to do a one-year note. We can get a better interest rate. It's easier to use, move in the market. And frankly, after August of this year, we'll be finished with our two-year audit cycle with the state of Ohio finishing the past two years' worth of audits, and that'll make us more attractive to refinance a portion of this. So we should be able to be looking for refinancing uh, towards the end of this year so that one year from now we can take a portion of this and refinance it, hopefully being able to pay off approximately 600000 more of it so that we only do one more financing, thereby decreasing the amount of the city's debt over time. The initial refinancing for this has been going on several years ago. Um, just as a history, notes were originally, originally issued in 1996. They were uh, redone in 2004, redone in 2006. At that time, we anticipated that the Rookwood project would have significant revenue 
uh, starting in 2010, 2013, or sorry, 2012, 2013, 2014. Uh, but as you know, the economy took a serious downturn in 2009, and those peak uh, payments that we were going to be making on the payback of the initial bonds were so significant that the city would not be able to repay them. So we refinanced a portion of the bonds three years ago, a $600,000 one-year note, and then did the uh, $1.77 million two years ago. We're in a position to start paying these off, which we have been doing. Uh, so we're refinancing a smaller amount next year, refinancing an even smaller amount, and then being done with it, hopefully, after that point. The, uh, the note, as I said, is $1.2 million. Uh, that's backed by our property taxes. It comes out of the bond retirement fund, which is segregated by the county on the collection of the property taxes. Um, is there any questions I can answer to this? Questions, Mr. Sanker. Mr. Sith, um, is there a particular date that we need to have this taken care of by? Mm -hmm. March twenty seventh. <laughs> yes, uh, Madam President, is, that is correct. Uh, my daughter's birthday, uh, my oldest, wow. uh, March twenty seventh, is also another special day dear to my heart because that's when we have to write a big check, of one million seven hundred seventy thousand dollars. Uh, April 1st, then, is also the U.S. bank note, which is the original bond that we were talking about that was structured <coughs> from many years ago. Uh, its payment is due April 1st, so both of those tend to come pretty closely together. But using the property taxes with this $1.2 million, we, uh, we should be able to pay those off, taking something off the table of significant amount. Any other questions of Mr. Stith? Motion on the floor is to suspend the rules. Uh, call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumford? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. An ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of not to exceed $1,200,000 notes in anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of refunding outstanding bond anticipation notes and declaring an emergency. An ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of not to exceed $1,200,000 notes in, anticip in anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of refunding outstanding bond anticipation notes and declaring an emergency. An ordinance providing for the issuance and sale of not to exceed $1,200,000 notes in the anticipation of the issuance of bonds for the purpose of refunding outstanding bond anticipation notes and declaring an emergency. Mr. Clark. Move that the ordinance be passed. Seconded by Mr. Mumper. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden. Yes. Mr. Clark. Yes. Mr. Whittington. Yes. Ms. Allen. Yes. Mr. Thornbury. Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. We move on to introductory reading of resolutions. The first is a resolution urging the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Regional Council of Governments to fund a feasibility study and corridor analysis of higher speed rail service between Cincinnati and Chicago and the local transportation benefits to the Ohio and Indiana counties and communities within the OKI region that such a service improvement would directly affect. Ms. Allen. Yes, I ask that we suspend the rules and have all three readings. Seconded by Mr. Braden. Is there any discussion? Ms. Allen. Yep. I'll just explain what this is. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about this at the community development meeting, but it's um, we would be putting forth basically OKI is kind of the regional council, and they, <coughs> the idea is that right now Amtrak doesn't have can't remember and I might look to Mr. Bonzel but there's not miss how many uh, three, days three days a week there's uh, rail to Chicago whereas I think Indianapolis has three a day or uh, oh, it's just once a day so okay once a day but still so that it's really good for an economic development if we had more kind of direct service um, to Chicago so the idea is that okay I this is basically saying we support a study um, because we think that this is an important piece of kind of economic development in the region. And just as kind of a tie to Norwood, Siemens does um, some of the engine parts. Or what do they make exactly? I'm sorry, I keep looking because. No, no, I mean, 
some parts of the engine for Amtrak. So Norwood does have a direct connection in that way. So the, the reason we want it for an emergency is just that we'd like to get it there as soon as possible. Wyoming is an example. They did a resolution similar. So. Any other discussion? <coughs> Motion on the floor is to suspend the rules. Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Let's have all three readings. A resolution urging the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Regional Council of Governments to fund a feasibility study and a corridor analysis of higher speed rail service between Cincinnati and Chicago and the local transportation benefits to the Ohio and Indiana counties and communities within the OKI region that such service improvement would directly affect. A resolution urging the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Regional Council of Governments to fund a feasibility study and corridor analysis of higher speed rail service between Cincinnati and Chicago and the local transportation benefits for the Ohio and Indiana counties and communities within the OKI region that such a service improvement would directly affect. A resolution urging the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana Regional Council of Governments to fund a feasibility study and corridor analysis of higher speed rail service between Cincinnati and Chicago and the local transportation <coughs> benefits to the Ohio and Indiana counties and communities within the OKI region that such a service improvement would directly affect. Mr. Clark? I need to pass the resolution. Seconded by Mr. Mumpert. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Next is a resolution supporting the Wasson Way bicycle path and urging the City of Cincinnati to pursue the acquisition of the right of way, secure funding for its completion, and protect the right of way with appropriate zoning. Mr. Thornberry. Yes, Madam President. I move we suspend the rules and have all three readings of the resolution. Seconded by Mr. Braden. Is there any discussion? Ms. Allen? Yeah. This, this again, was brought to community development um, at the same time. And the idea, I mean, I think most of us know about the Wasson Way, but I'll just say what it is in case you don't, for those out there um, listening. It would be a, right now, a bicycle path that would um, basically start here kind of in the Norwood section and go eventually connect with the Loveland Bike Trail. Cincinnati's in the process of negotiating with the railway to um, get the right-of-way. What we're doing here is asking that um, the appropriate zoning happens, that it's a multimodal type of zoning, which in kind of regular language is that eventually there could be a light rail there, not just a back bike path. So that's important for us from an economic demand standpoint as well. I, I want to reiterate right now, all they're looking at is doing the bike path, but it allows for the option to do um, light rail in the future. So we want to tell Cincinnati that we support this. So, Mr. Sanker. Uh, yes, Madam President. Uh, question through the chair to uh, Ms. Allen. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so uh, you want to give an update like what this bike path, where it would run as far as through the city of Norwood? Is it just on the outskirts up near Dana <coughs> or down Montgomery Road or just? Correct. OK, yep. So it's where the rail line is um, right there through the Xavier's new development. And I actually, if if it's appropriate, I don't know if it is now, but Jay Andres, who were, is working with Wasson Way, is here. I don't know if he could say just a couple words about it. Mr. Andres? OK. If you could just give us your name and who you're associated sure. with or an address. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Jay Andrus. I'm the president of the board of the Wasson Way effort. Uh, and we're really excited about bringing this effort to Norwood and Cincinnati. I think it's going to make a tremendous difference. Uh, and uh, on March 26th, we're having a community meeting for Norwood at the Williams uh, Elementary School. Uh, and we hope that you'll you'll be able to attend and we're looking for input from the residents of Norwood on the construction of the bike trail and um, what time is that meeting it's it's uh, 630 at the Williams Avenue Elementary School 
And then you had asked um, Ms. Allen if you could talk about like where it would run through Norwood. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's the Norfolk Southern uh, right of way. It starts uh, at the I seventy one bridge by Dana, and comes through the uh, Norwood Depot area, crosses Montgomery Road uh, uh, near Dana and Montgomery, and then goes through uh, was it University Station? I think is the name of it, mm -hmm. and then crosses Dana down by Listerman's. And then goes south west to uh, Walnut Hills High School near Victory Parkway. It would be uh, a really significant change. Great opportunity. It will hook up to <coughs> the Little Miami Bike Trail at the extreme eastern end and then uh, uh, eventually Clifton at the western end. Mr. Sanker. Yeah, quick question. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so it basically it's kind of like a Dana Avenue run along Dana yeah. Avenue. Yeah, very much. Um, as far as running through University Station, I mean, is Xavier aware that where it's going to go through that particular property up there? It's not going to run right through one of those new buildings they just built, is it? <laughs> <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. so. One of the benefits of the railroad being so difficult with the acquisition of the right of way is that the right-of-way was preserved through University Station, so there was a benefit there, actually. Any other questions of Mr. Andrews? Thank you. All right, thanks. <coughs> Excuse me. The motion on the floor is to suspend the rules. Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Uh, yes. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Please have all three readings. A resolution supporting the Lawson Way bicycle path and urging the City of Cincinnati to pursue the acquisition of the right-of-way secure funding for its completion and protect the right-of-way with appropriate zoning. A resolution supporting the Wasson Way bicycle path and urging the City of Cincinnati to pursue the acquisition of the right-of-way secure funding for its completion, and protect the right-of-way with appropriate zoning. A resolution supporting the Wasson Way bicycle path <coughs> and urging the City of Cincinnati to pursue the acquisition of the right-of-way, secure funding for its completion, and protect the right-of-way with appropriate zoning. Mr. Clark. I move that the resolution be passed. Seconded by Mr. Brayton. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Brayton. Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. We'll move on to administration reports. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Madam President. <coughs> I know this is difficult for you, but try to bear with me. Let's, I'd like to take you back about two weeks or a week to 10 days when we had snowstorms, three snowstorms in, over a period of a week. Um, just as an update, we tried to put out on Facebook uh, what our situation was with vehicles and personnel. Um, we got through it. Uh, we probably had seven water leaks during that time we had to put the water crew on uh, from old taps and etc they got all those accomplished the trucks are of course were breaking down but they managed to keep them running one of the complaints we heard was um, places like Grandview and the smaller streets uh, were not getting hit well it, it took longer than normal well that's during the path of a snowstorm as Joe and I talked about each snow event is different. The weather conditions changed, you know, the moisture content in the snow, the, the cold <coughs> air, it all changes so you attack each event as, as experience tells you to. Uh, in the past, uh, sometimes they would just plow and throw salt and then go back and plow the salt off and go. So in these long, long-term events where you're going to get heavy snow, we just keep plowing until we figure it's going to break and then we plow in salt. One of the trucks we use for smaller streets such as Grandview, a Dead End to Hunter and something, you know, areas like that where you can't get these large plows down through there, uh, was broke down. And so the device they used to spread the salt had to be taken off of the truck. The bed of the truck had to be taken off. 
the fuel tank had to be taken off so a new fuel pump could be put in. So that's, that, that threw us behind schedule. But all in all, in comparison to the uh, city of Cincinnati and watching it on the news, watching the news coverage every two blocks, there was somebody over with a camera and a light on telling you it was snowing, which I didn't know, and, and they were thankful enough that they told me that it was snowing. Um, and, and, and you could see the conditions of the street deteriorating. So uh, we, we did have some mechanical problems, but we managed to get it back. Uh, and and I, I know it wasn't perfect to everybody, but when you get out, when you drive around, you see that you know we were no different than anybody else, and we were operating with a third of the equipment per capita that everybody else has. So, uh, Joe Gears and uh, Pete and, and those, those guys in that uh, department down there did a good job. Uh, and and I, I mean that sincerely. The other issue I want to bring up, uh, usually we don't we stay out of school business, but I want to tell you this, you know, I, I want to uh, recognize uh, Rob Amodio, the school superintendent, because, you know, Calling a snow day on, on, on schools uh, with snowstorms and cold weather is a difficult situation. Uh, it's a, it, there's a lot that goes into it, and, and I'm sure, and I've talked to Mr. Murillo in the past, the safety of those children is number one. And I recall stories of him being out uh, when the weather changed very much in his car looking for kids. And uh, that's a difficult decision to make. Uh, I know that people say that's what he gets paid for, but it's one of those deals where darn if you do, darn if you don't, you know what I'm saying? So, and, and I think he weighs into a lot, and depends on a lot of people, and he comes down and sees for himself. The last snow event, I think they had, um, that people were closing schools before the end of the day, and Norwood schools kept operating, and as it turned out, they got through the school day without any problem. I think there was testing involved there. So, you know, it, it, it's not our decision. We're there to support the schools, but I want to recognize the process that those schools and that superintendent go through when they make those kind of decisions. So I, I think it's something that should be discussed, and if you talk to them, I think they ought to be told that they did a good job also. So with that said, um, Right now, the news stories are, they got people calling, send us your potholes, you know, and they got news crews out there again with potholes. Uh, we are once again ahead of them. Uh, Mr. Gears, weather permitting, uh, we're, we're buying hot mix and we're getting on those, uh, the hot mix plants are open and we're buying that. So we are, we're getting out there as weather permitting as fast as we can and trying to keep ahead of it before it gets uh, it gets too far ahead. You know, there's been discussions in the past, um, you know, you know, what's the city's liability? Well, our city's liability, and following the direction of the law department, once we know of something, then we've got a reasonable amount of time to get out and take care of it. I think one of the reasons that, uh, that is re re our potholes have been reduced is somewhere on these main streets, over a period of time, we've gotten grants and uh, funds and everything else to redo uh, streets, whether it be curbs, sidewalks, storm water, water and everything else, Williams Avenue, Montgomery Road, Smith Road, you name it. And a lot of these streets have been done with no cost to the city. So if you remember uh, last year, there was a <coughs> Channel 9 crew set up there at Edmondson and, uh, and I-71 and they, they even brought their lunch. They sat there and showed the cop cops flying off. And, now that's all done and that's all smooth so they can go somewhere in Cincinnati and get their new story. So, I mean, we are, Mr. Gears has got them out ahead of schedule and we will stay on it. And if you hear anything, call us and we'll get to it as, as humanly possible, weather permitting. We still do have some salt left. Uh, uh, we, were, we were low at one time, we got a PO through and the finance committee and Mr. Stith helped us and got us through that. And we got the salt ordered, and we got it in, and we still got some left. We were low, a uh, couple of salt shakers, but we still had some. And, uh, but we used up all that excess we had left over from a few years ago. And uh, hopefully we won't need any more. Um, 
We have also uh, received a, a approval for improvements to B Street. I think if council remembers we had passed that a few years ago. We will get the details in for that. Uh, B Street will be between uh, Norwood and Highland Avenue. Stormwater <coughs> sidewalks, curves, water lines, and resurfacing all the way up through there. So we'll have the details coming in on that in the next couple of weeks. But that project should be, if you remember right, we had the plans drawn up and, uh, and everything ready to go. We should save some money on engineering plans because the plans were already drawn up. And um, uh, there will be a few minor changes, but once we get that done, that, that project will also start here soon. So, you know, there is some progress being made. Uh, uh, and once again, I, I still feel that uh, one of our goals and anybody else's, you know, in any management practice, you do the best and you get the most out of what you've got to work with. Uh, and, and I think that's what this city has done now for some time. So. Um, one last thing, um, Easter in the Park is on Saturday, uh, March 28th at 9.30 at Waterworks Park. And um, that's where the kids come down by the thousands. I mean, they're just they grabbing candy. You know, if you'd stop, they'll take it right out of your pocket. But there's kids all over down there. And Jenny Wallace, every year, goes out and finds donors and, and people that want to jump in and help and support it. And every year she comes across, and every year those kids are down there, rain or shine. <laughs> so if you if you got a chance on March 28th at 9:30, uh, go down there and watch it. It's it's if you don't have your kids down there, your grandkids, it's worth seeing. So that'll be the 28th, and hopefully there won't be any snow. So that's about it. If anybody's got any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Any questions of the mayor? Thank you. Mr. Mayor, I did have one question. We had a um, meeting, a tree board meeting earlier today, and they asked, do we ever get notification of the community development block grant funding yet? Do I've you know? talked to Joe. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Thank you. When, you, when we know, the tree board will be first. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> All right, we'll move on to other requests to address council. We have one, Mary Yeager. I'm going to come forward and give us your name and address. And you'll have five minutes. Okay. Thanks. Hi. My name is Mary Yeager. I live on 2215 Adams Avenue behind Kroger. Um, just quick, I did want to kind of following up with what the mayor said. We got, um, I attended a charity event February 21st, right after one of those big snowstorms. And as uh, so, this is about 12 30 in the morning. I was trying to pull in my driveway and I got stuck. So, my car was straddling the road, and as my husband's trying to help, you know, we're trying to get the car out, there were police officers that were going in the neighborhood, and they stopped, and they helped us get our car out of the road. So I'm here to publicly thank them. Unfortunately, I can't remember their names, but I, I do appreciate for them to get out at <coughs> probably 1 o'clock in the morning to help dig our car out was, I think, a little above and beyond their typical duties and um, I had talked to Donna before and she said it's good for council to hear good news too and so I thought <laughs> I'll be up here and make sure everybody knows and the citizens of Norm know we've got great police officers out there willing to go the extra mile and then secondly just one thing my um, son's part of trail life he has service hours and one thing he asked about doing was seeing if there were people who needed snow you know like the sh you know there's the the ordinance to shovel the sidewalks if there is a uh, something posted or a way that we could i could direct him so that not this year hopefully <laughs> maybe next year that he could go out and those um, elderly or those who are sick and can't get out and do it i'd certainly like a resource that i could go to and say okay here's some people that need some help and he gets the service hours and nord gets the sidewalks cleared and the elderly get some help so if there isn't something I'd certainly be interested in, in learning or establishing or seeing if something can be done. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Yeager. We'll move on to unfinished business. Any unfinished business? Any new business? 
Mr. Sanker, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. We'll move on to communications. The first is a letter from the mayor regarding mayor's court fines for January. Ms. Donna M. Lake, President and members of Norwood City Council, <coughs> Norwood City Hall, RE Mayor's Court Fines. Dear Madam President and members of council, in close, please find an amended report for Norwood Mayor's Court for the month of January 2015. Should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Sincerely, Thomas F. Williams, Mayor, City of Norwood. Mr. Clark? Move that the report be received and filed. Seconded by Mr. Brayton. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Brayton? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. Next is a letter from the mayor regarding mayor's court fines for February 2015. Ms. Donna M. Lake, President and members of Norwood City Council, Norwood City Hall. RE Mayor's Court Fines. Dear Madam President and members of Council, enclosed, please find the report for Norwood Mayor's Court for the month of February 2015. Should you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. Sincerely, Thomas F. Williams, Mayor, City of Norwood. Mr. Clark. I move that this report be received and filed as well. Seconded by Mr. Mumper. Is there any discussion? Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion Thanks. carries. Next is a letter from Mark Gutentag regarding carry out liquor permit Trex transfer to Norwood, Ohio. <coughs> January 20, 2015. Councilman Joseph Sanker, Norwood City Council, 4645 Montgomery Road, Norwood, Ohio, 45212. RE, carry out liquor permit, Trex transfer to Norwood, Ohio, Norwood Petro, Inc. Dear Councilman Sanker, I write as a follow-up to our telephone conversation of last fall. As you may recall, I represent Norwood Petro, Inc., which is the owner and operator of the service station located at 2265 Norwood Road, Norwood, Ohio, formerly a Swifty service station. My client is planning to expand the convenience store offering <coughs> at the location to include beer and wine carryout. Norwood Petro Inc. has filed an application for a new carryout liquor permit for the state of Ohio. However, the quota for such permits in Norwood available for direct issue from the state of Ohio is full. You may be aware that the state of Ohio allows liquor permits to be moved from one part of the state to another part of the state for the purposes of economic development, a TREX transfer. Within the past few years, the state legislature has unanimously twice amended the Ohio Revised Code to remove the long list of requirements necessary to facilitate the transfer of liquor, of liquor permits from one part of the state to another. The remaining requirement to file a TREX transfer application is the acknowledgement of the municipality or township to which the permit will be transferred. See enclosed TREX transfer form. Once the TREX transfer application has been filed with the Ohio Division of Liquor Control, it will go through the normal transfer application process, including notification to the City of Norwood as is done in every transfer, renewal, and new permit application. The president of Norwood Petro Inc. is Sandeep Patel. Mr. Patel is a businessman who currently owns four other service station slash convenience store locations. Three of the locations have Ohio carry out liquor permits. An application is pending on the fourth location. None of Mr. Patel's locations have ever received a liquor violation. He takes great pride in this and trains his staff accordingly. For your convenience and review, I have enclosed the following. One, economic development Trex transfer form. Two, proposed Trex transfer location information. Three, Brief tax brief sorry excuse me brief Trex law history four Trex process summary five liquor permit transfer process summary six Ohio Revised Code four three zero three dot two nine B two and Norwood Petro Inc. and Sandeep Patel are happy to be doing business in the city of Norwood and look forward to a long lasting relationship with the city of Norwood. Please call me at your convenience with any thoughts. Thank you. Respect, respectfully, Mark S. Gutenberg. Mr. Sanker. 
Yes, Madam President, <coughs> I would recommend that the uh, letter be received and filed and that the, the matter as far as uh, signing a TREX form be referred to the Community Development Committee. Is there a second to that? Seconded by Mr. Mumper. Is there any discussion? Mr. Sanker. Madam President, a couple notes of clarification. I believe the letter that was meant to be read on council was the one dated March the 4th. Oh. However, that's okay. The other clarification is the letter that which was read was dated January the 20th of 2015. Uh, the clerk secretary never ever did receive a copy of this letter to forward to me. I didn't receive a copy of this until into February via email from Mr. Guten, Guten Tag. Tang. Is it Guten Tag or Guten Tag? And Guten Tag. at that time, I, I did not feel that it was uh, as stated in here. You know, all it takes is one signature for this application to be submitted to the state. Uh, granted, I'm the, the rep representative in that particular area. However, I didn't feel that just my signature would uh, justify potentially the uh, issuance of a transferred liquor license into the neighborhood. Um, it also states that the mayor can sign that as well as uh, the law director's office can sign the same form. So after I received this, I went and uh, made a copy, gave it to the mayor's office as well. He didn't feel it was proper for him just to sign the form as well as uh, the law director's office did not feel that they should uh, just sign off on um, the application. So uh, therefore I reported back to Mr. Gutentang and said, you know, I'm referring this to the law department, please contact Mr. Brown, which is stated in the other, uh, the other letter here. So uh, the reason I put it in committee is it is, uh, there, if the TREX form of application, once the city signs off and says, okay, yeah, go ahead and apply to the state for a TREX uh, transfer of liquor license, um, it then goes to the state, and typically the state, they'll send it back to the council for, um, for review if there's any um, disagreements or why it shouldn't be granted. However, our experience with the state Board of Liquor Control, when we've had uh, any types of uh, disagreements uh, on liquor license, we've never really prevailed uh, well uh, in these areas. Um, the concern is, in talking to some folks, is that this it would be a, a liquor license that would be put into the Swifty station there on um, on uh, Norwood Avenue and I, I'm not quite sure whether at that point in time they'd have to come and get a building permit to build a building in order to house the coolers and the, uh, whether to be walk-in or is it but so right now they're asking for council to let them apply for a liquor permit but we really don't have any real details on whether uh, what the, the, the overall plan is if this liquor permit would be granted by the state. Therefore, the reason I recommend putting it in community development <coughs> it would give the committee an opportunity to hear what the pr pr proposed plans would be for that piece of property and, not, um, and let them hear a little more detail about it and then present it to council is if, if, if it's just going to be a liquor license just stuck in that same little building there or if they're going to build a whole new store, uh, I think those are some details that we need to know before we uh, apply um, for a, you know, a TREX transfer. So that's my reason. That's the explanation for why it, it is appearing here before council. And that's the reason I recommend putting it in community development. And I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Sanger, we didn't, there wasn't anything in our packet from March, the letter, so. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I apologize if it was the wrong one, but there was, no. yeah, there's nothing in our packet, so. Is there any other discussion? The motion on the floor is to receive and file the letter and to place the matter into the Community Development Committee. Call the roll, please. 
Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornbury? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. The next is just the economic development TREX transfer form. Do you, I'm assuming, I shouldn't assume. What's your pleasure? Would you like to place that into community <coughs> development committee as well, Mr. Thornberry? Yes, Madam President. Yes, I would agree that this should also be included with the uh, discussion in the community development. Seconded by Mr. Clark. Is there any discussion? Mr. Um, Berkowitz, do you have any advice or is this mm -hmm. any comments? I just offered to you in case you want to say anything. Thank you, Madam President. Um, it's really up to council how to proceed as to uh, this matter, pretty much as Mr. Sanker explained um, with the last. Um, if there are questions as to the details of the proposal, then um, whether it's in a committee meeting or, um, or by way of some other means for the council to get more information, then that is certainly uh, a prerogative. To notify your office for any questions. Thank you. Any other discussion? The motion on the floor is to receive and file and place it into community development. Call the roll, please. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Just a You're asking if there are any other discussion. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, just, I'm assuming that has officially been put into the committee, so we're having a committee meeting just to say that that date, the typical date for the community development uh, committee meeting is the first Monday of the month. So in this case, it will be uh, April 6th at, uh, do we do 6 or 6? At 5.30 p.m. Here in council chambers. Here in council chambers, yes. Okay, so the community development meeting again, April the 6th at 5.30 here in council. Thank you, Mr. Chamber. Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornberry? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes. Mr. Mumper? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. We have no absent members. Mr. Clark? I move to adjourn. Seconded by Mr. Thornberry. Call the roll, please. Mr. Braden? Yes. Mr. Clark? Yes. Mr. Whittington? Yes. Ms. Allen? Yes. Mr. Thornberry? Yes. Mr. Sanker? Yes, sir. Mr. Mumford? Yes. All members present voting aye. The motion carries. This meeting is hereby adjourned.